Hi, this is Dr. Tom Moorcroft. Welcome to Full Cup Life, the podcast that goes behind the science of living well to exposing the truths and tactics to savor all that your journey to greater success has to offer to you every sip of the way. Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Tom. Welcome to Full Cup Life. Uh, today, I wanted to bring on a really special guest, uh, Jen Warner. And she's a friend and colleague and someone who, um, you know, a lot of times when you get on the podcast thing, you, you, we're always trying to find like the biggest, baddest ass guest to have, you know, who's got the biggest list or the cool, sounds the coolest, wrote the most books. But then when I get done listening to that, I'm like, that's really inspirational. But I mean, I, like we already know those people are doing great. How do we apply this in our own lives? And Jen's a great person, but also when we had a com this conversation um, that really inspired us to have to talk tonight uh, was that she's applying the, the principles that we talk about in a really straightforward, simple way and having exceptional results uh, equal to anybody I've heard of in applying this. So Jen, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> Yeah, this is great. So we were talking the other night um, and, you know, because I, I do the Mindset Mondays and really just try to share little tips that we could apply. And one of the things that people say a lot is that it can't be that easy. It can't be that simple. <laughs> but it sounds like you had a different experience. Well, the, I think it was actually the very first email that you sent out was the one that actually slapped me across the face the hardest. It was fairly early on when you when I started reading them. And mm -hmm. I remember thinking to myself, and I think I may have even said it to you at one point, wow, I think that email you wrote exactly for me. Cause I read it to my husband and I read it to my son and both of them were like, eh, okay. But it resonated so loud and clear to me. And I thought, okay. And honestly, I don't even remember what email it was, but I just remember thinking, yeah, okay. Time to move forward with this. So, and it, it was just very simple. It was just, it resonated really loud and clear. So do you remember like um, a little bit of like what it inspired in you? Um, Cause I know the first one, I just pulled them up, like time for a big change. <laughs> and yeah, that sounds about right. Well, I mean, I've been stuck in kind of a rut for a really long time in a lot of different ways. And I've always felt like in so many different areas of my life, I'm just like swimming in the same circle. And it was like this slap was like, you're not going to get out of the circle unless you go do something different mm. than what you're doing. But I needed someone else that wasn't swimming in the same circle as me to say that to me. And I think that's what happened. Um, but I don't think there was any one particular like sentence or like anything specific that, that you said, it was just very like, I already knew this. Why am I not yeah, doing yeah. this in my life? It was just said in a different way with different verbiage than I think it may be, or other people have said, or I've read in books or whatever. It was just the right timing for me. And I don't know, it just moved very easily moved forward. That's awesome. You know, I mean, for me, one of the things that really always jumped out was like exactly that feeling of I, this is, a, I know this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I already know this shit, but why am I not doing it? Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And it's, then somebody um, else shares. Right. Right. Well, and I think it like when you talk, like the way you talk is kind of how I think in my own head normally I'm so sorry <laughs> I, no I, but it maybe it was <laughs> but it's the truth and now I'm always like that's crazy okay so maybe it is crazy but then hearing someone else say what I already think and know I, I don't know there was nothing super exceptional or groundbreaking about it it was just hearing it from someone else at the right time in the right space the right mindset, maybe. Maybe I was in the space where I needed to hear it. Um, I just remember reading that email and being like, okay. I was reading it to people. It was that profound to me that I was going around with my phone reading it to people. 
That's awesome. You know, it's interesting too, because it's like it, when we do this work, like I want to help everybody, right? Like, I, and I know that like so many people who are listening to this are like, they want to help their family, their spouse, their kids, their friends. They want to change the world. We're getting sick of COVID. We're getting sick of like all this other stuff in the world. We just want more love and all this other stuff. And, but we run around, like you're saying, we tell everybody, but the thing that inspires us personally may not be their thing. And it's just really cool that like when, but you still share it and you share your passion, but it's, that's the part I think that you, you catch them with your passion, you catch them with the right time for them and it, and it can make a big difference. So, you know, I, I mean, I know what I talk about a lot because it's, I think it's the same thing. It is nothing like I, in one sense, it's nothing special. The other sense is it's, it's so super simple yet underlying both of not that special and super simple is the fact that it's based on universal law. And it, if you, if you follow it and you put it into action, and like you said, you do it for yourself, it'll work. So what did you do with this newfound inspiration? Um, well, actually the very first thing was I talked to you about it because I was so frustrated that my son and my husband were not hearing me. Like I wanted to shake them <laughs> and because I was so excited. And you said to me, and I won't ever forget this. You said, why do you need them? You can go out and do this for you. And the more you go out and do for you, they're going to see what you're doing. They're going to see the positive changes. They're going to see your positive attitude and whatever things, things in life are happening to you. And then they're going to get on board. And that did eventually happen. I, I stopped focusing on the family as a whole. And I said, you know what? I've been doing, doing, doing for people for so long. What about me? What do I want? So I stopped looking at what we need as a family and what we want as a parent and whatever. And what do I want for myself? So I started reading your things more and I just kind of took it like one week at a time reading them because I was like, like I told you the other day, I didn't want to take everything in my life that I could have applied it to and be overwhelmed with like, if it worked, yeah, and be, like, slapped in the face with too much stuff. So I picked one avenue of my life that was solely mine. And that was, that was my business, my Etsy business. And I didn't really do anything in particular, except for just focus on like what you said, what do you want as your end goal? Not what do you want today? Not what do you want at the end of the week? What do you want your paycheck to be at the end of the week? What do you really want to see your business do? And I kind of doodled and whatever, and I have it on the wall actually right behind me. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's right in front of me while I'm working. And, and I usually, normally I'm in a headspace where I'm like, that will never happen. That would never happen to me. Cause I didn't realize when I was looking at that stuff that I was in negative headspace all the time. And looking at that from a different perspective, it changed everything. And I didn't do anything. Like I literally looked at it as, yep. That could be mine someday. And I'm going to do whatever I have to do as the steps come to, to me to get to that goal. And then my business blew up like out of nowhere. Just, I didn't do anything. I just. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to pause you for one second because I, I, I want to hear about the blowing up because that's the part that we're, we're all looking for the, you know, know, we all want to be there. But one of the things, I mean, I think there's a couple of things is, it's so important where we focus on ourselves and ourselves first and getting out of that mindset of that's selfish. Exactly. Because I know for a fact that you're a great mom and a great wife, but I know that you're an even greater mother and a greater wife when you focus on you and you, the same love that you give to your family that you give to yourself first. So you can actually show up a hundred billion percent for them when it's that time. And I find that so many, I grew up in a place where that wasn't the way it was, right? It was like, we give to everybody else. And if there's anything left over, oh, poor martyr Tom, you'll get that.
but that doesn't allow us to show up at our best. And it's like the energy you had the other day when we talked, I was like, what the hell happened? <laughs> and the other, you know, which is great. The other part of what I think is so brilliant is it was like, you're like, I don't even know if this stuff is real. It's going to do it, but wherever my head is, I'm going to change it. So I just put it on the wall so that I, whenever I had a moment where I was bored and I could think about it, oh, I didn't know, I, I did not leave what I was thinking about to chance. I put it in front of me. So I always saw what that dream was. Yeah. And if I wavered on it, I could remember that moment when I wrote all that doodly crap down. <laughs> like it doesn't even look like those scribbles, like a little kid drawing on the wall. I remember even the moment when I wrote it too. Um, is all I think is equally as important because sometimes just seeing that visual might not be enough, but it's a trigger of remembering where your headspace was when you wrote that stuff down. Or what that. does that feel like though? When, when you, when you want, look at it, like even now, when you look at it, like, and you get into that head, what's it feel like? Uh, well, there were, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, what are you doing? Like, like the, uh, like the normal, like your normal reaction to something that large. And then, uh, but then I, that goes away really quickly. And then I'm like, I get really inspired. Like I have materials like all over the place, like right here. And I'm like, Ooh, what can I, and then I start like fiddling through my things. I'm like what can I, do? and I just dream a little, that's all. I mean, it's, it changes my mindset from, I, I didn't realize until those series of emails that I started kind of getting into it, that I have been in a very negative headspace for a very long time. And that piece of paper kind of clears the clutter. Isn't it that, crazy? It is crazy. I had no idea how negative my mindset was about everything. And, and if you take that and there's the awareness of that, but the, the super crazy part to me is that it, all you need to do to switch it is to write what you want on the wall. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, but you have to be, I think it's not just what you want. You have to, because you can say, I want like a happy family. I want, of, of course we want all the, you know, that stuff. I'm going to be comfortable like, with my living life finances. No, it's like dream, like dig deep and dream. What do you want? Like, do you want to retire on the, no, not, not that kind of stuff, retire on the beach. Like, what do you, what do you want for you to make you fulfilled? And right. I forgot how to dream for myself. And that little doodles, those little doodles are just kind of a reminder of that for myself. And, you know, it, it's so critical, Jen, what you just said is I think it's like we forget how to dream because we're so busy not dreaming. And it's not like we don't want to dream, but, it, and it's not like we can't, a lot of people, are, oh, I can't dream or whatever. Like, no, we just, it, it's a, like a muscle. You have to practice it. So I even have at my place, we, I, I went and I got the um, 3M, you know, little posties. Well, they make oh, yeah. like two by threes that you can, that are huge, like yeah, two yeah. Four by three. And I got these and it's just like doodle. And then it's like, oh, that's close. And I put that one up and then I do another one. But it's like, it a lot, th there's something about the actual drawing and the writing that we've gotten away from with a lot of the typing that really makes a big difference. And I want everybody who's listening or watching to really catch when, when Jen starts to talk about <laughs> what's in her head versus dreaming, there's a complete different energy to her and to her voice. And, and it, it's that, that you get that inspiration, that energy that you're used to from when you were a kid that yep. really gets you motivated. Yep. So what happened here? Cause I, I don't want to keep everybody like waiting. Like, cause you're like, Hey, like I started reading these little mini emails from Warcraft and then something blew up. So, <laughs> um, well, I guess, so the, the, the one driving thing that was kind of like the weight that was holding, I've always been very crafty and I'm always been kind of an entrepreneur. That's what I've, I know that about myself. And I've always kind of dabbled in different things and I still dabble in different things. And even I volunteer in different ways to kind of fulfill those things, but it's never been, I don't know, quite enough. And the last few years I've been volunteering, doing some stuff for a town that kind of 
started to pull up a little bit of this, like something is there, something is cooking and I can't quite figure out what it was or what it is. Um, but I always had this negative heavy stuff. And that is the issue of that. We have black mold in our house and I didn't realize how much of our day I consumed talking about it, whether it was a passing comment or maybe it was a 30 minute conversation about how we're going to fix this or the finances for that or whatever. It always existed in the house in some way, shape or form. I didn't realize I was driving that ship and my husband actually was like, you you know, you're, you're the prime example of that running through the forest with a plate in front of your face. And so it's really corny, but it is so true. I literally am that one who has a white dinner plate that has the word black mold written across the plate right in front of my face. And I cannot see the forest in front of me. And I'm running, 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 and I'm stumbling and I'm falling and, and I'm getting up and swearing and I'm pissed off and I'm scratched to hell because I'm whatever, because I have a stupid plate and I can't see anything. And it wasn't until all of your emails that I realized you got to put the plate down, woman. You don't have to let go of it because you know you have to take care of it, but you got to put it down. And then all of these opportunities started to like, just come at me and like the most, I can't even explain it, like it extraordinary kind of way. Like my business went from, and I actually looked at the stats today, so I could even blow your mind even more. <laughs> um, I went from having, um, I, can't remember, I had an 885% increase in sales in this quarter versus last quarter after wow. I, right? Like I put, I looked up in numbers just so I could see it in like black and white. Like I was, I've been mailing 350 packages out a week for the last three weeks, but since October, it's really like, and that was when it all started. When I started to kind of like stop talking about the mold and stop focusing on that and stop projecting it out onto my family and myself and whatever. And I started to dream more in my business. I started to remember why I love doing what I do. I remember, you know, I rebranded my entire business about to incorporate magic and sunshine and everything that I do, because I want to spread that everywhere I go. But it was also coming back in this direction. As I was doing it, I would get emails from customers and, and rev the reviews I read from my customers are just I can tell what I'm putting out is coming back to me. And it is simply because I dropped that plate away and got to see all these amazing opportunities. And I'm not doing anything differently as a business owner. I'm just more, I don't know. I don't want to say childlike, but in that dreaming sense, that's how I talk to people and they talk that way back to me. And it's just referrals and whatever. I think there's a lot of you inspired, like we all, I mean, so many people I meet are craving to be told it's okay to be that child. Yeah. To just dream like you used to. And it's like, you know, everybody's like, oh, like if I only knew, if I could only go back to when I was 18 and know what I know today, well, you can, right? Yeah. I mean, you can yeah. literally be childlike and go and enjoy it. And I think the thing, because I got mesmerized for a moment while you're talking. I'm like, man, I wish I could be that eloquent about it because you're, you're basically like, I did nothing different except to me, it feels like you showed up. Yeah. Like you actually showed up as Jen, not as somebody who's putting up a facade to be a business owner or not somebody who's struggling in life. Like you just showed up and you shared your passion. Yeah. So you were always doing the thing you wanted to do, but you weren't really fully there. And you always, you're, it was, it's like your kids know when you're not yeah. paying attention. Your spouse knows when you're distracted. <laughs> yeah. At least mine does. Totally. hundred <laughs> percent. Yes, totally. <laughs> yeah. And then you show up for accurate. 
That's definitely yeah, and, and so I think it's a huge shift, Jen, when you when you show up and you're just like, look, I'm just gonna be me, but I'm really gonna be me. I'm not like just showing up and, like to show up and get a job or a paycheck, but I'm yeah. here because this is what I love to do. And then you inspire others because you talk to them from that place of passion. Yep. And it, I think it further kind of pushed everything along as I saw the responses coming back to me, how I was putting myself out there were coming back the same, which further like I was doing longer hours, more stuff, making more products, staying up at ungodly hours, making sure people get their stuff early, 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 because I wanted to bring joy to their mailbox in this horrifying, awful year that this is. I have glitter and stickers and confetti in my packages. And I want, I'm doing that crap at like 1 30 in the morning. Cause I want them to get their mail and be happy for that one moment. And it just, I don't know, it just kind of pushed everything in a direction I did not see coming a mile away. <laughs> well, and you know, the other part too is I'm just thinking like, I'm always like, part of my mission in life is, is obviously to enjoy myself. Well, maybe not obvious, but I want to enjoy myself and do the things <laughs> I love. But I also want to inspire other people. It's a huge part. I want people to live their passion. That's kind of what full cup life is all about. I mean, I'm so sick and tired of the glasses half full or half empty. It's not, it should overflow. There's tons of abundance and you proved it. But what's the beauty of what you're telling me is you went out and did something for you that allowed you to have a bigger impact on other people than you previously were when you were being selfish. Yep. I mean, yep. if you just want to cut it to the heart of the manager, we were not getting all of Jen. That's right. I wanted more of Jen in the world. When I got more of Jen, everybody's like, we want more. We feel good. And you're inspiring us to go do this to somebody else and pay it forward. Yep. Because I know that joy that they got out of opening that box with all the yeah. extra. Yeah. It's going to go way beyond just that day when they open it. I know. Yep. And that's, you know, I mean, I even, there was one, actually a really small story where I had a woman email me and say, oh, I forgot to change my shipping address. We just moved. Did you already mail my package? And I already had. And so instead of being the normal business owner, oh, well, you know, you're SOL, I mailed it to her. And, and I said, if for some reason this gets forwarded to you, pay it forward to somebody who needs it. And she actually ended up getting it. And she actually gifted it to somebody in her, in, on her floor at her, the hospital she works at and proceeded to then put in an order for the entire pediatric unit in their hospital because of that one, <laughs> like, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I, think about the, the simple thing. I mean, I know that costs you a little bit of extra money. 10 bucks. It, how much? It cost me 10 bucks. And what did you get? And, and $10 that you didn't stress about, like you put the plate down, oh, it's 10 bucks. I'll put it down and do the right thing that feels right to me. And yep. then you put it out there. And now the whole pediatric unit's got what they need, extra love. It was a $285 order. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know how many people lit at the moment listening have a business, but let me tell you, if I could increase in one quarter by right? 885%, I might be retired right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, right? Like, I was like, it's such a small little story, but it's really not. Like, I will never forget that woman and that one little oops ever because it was like what I'm doing is the it works it's the right thing to do it's what I'm supposed to be doing it feels right it feels good other people feel good you know well I wonder in this time how many people think that their lives are insignificant or can't impact other people or you know oh I wish I could do more but I really can't you know it's like so many of us can make one of the things I always try to tell people is especially like if for parents with kids, even our teens who are basically giving us the bird and who are not paying attention, they are listening to what you do and watching what you do, even when they tell you they're not. They are in the other room, what's up? 
And, you know, it's interesting, the influence that each and every one of us has of, of, on the people around us is usually much greater than we give ourselves credit for. We yeah. tend to look at other people and overemphasize their importance and their impact. And we look at ourselves and we downplay our impact. And it's really interesting because look at what you did. Like, and I've worked on the pediatric units in the hospital. I mean, I've been in medicine since 1995. I've worked in the hospital since, you know, one way or another, starting around the year 2000. So I've actually, no, I should, 1997. <laughs> but the point is, every single time that I went there, whether I went there for my job or I went there with my dog volunteering for therapy work, especially with the kids. If you cha if you do something nice for one person, everybody hears about it, everybody feels it, everybody's inspired. So, I mean, Jen, kudos, that's crazy. It was a really amazing feeling. Like, yeah, there wasn't really anywhere. I, like, I was floored. Like, the emails that I got, you know, after the order came in, I stared at it because I didn't know who this person was. And then I got the email from the original person. And then I got the email from the person who ordered. And I was like, I actually sat here and this, this is uh, where I do all my work. I actually sat here, Greg, because I was like, I don't know where to put these emotions right now because of one little $10 thing, you know, spread a little Christmas cheer all around. And it was more than just spreading Christmas cheer. It was uplifting a whole bunch of people who probably really, really, really needed it in that moment. Right. And that's what you did with $10 and a little bit of love. Yeah. I can't wait to hear the next story. Oh, <laughs> the next story. <laughs> oh, the ones with the. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, the next time that you have the opportunity oh, the to time? do something like Think about it. Like you're all like, I'll just do this $10. Right. And you made that much of a difference. Right. So now, I mean, and it's like, what's really cool is you, you can see the, I I'm watching you think, and I'm like thinking like, man, you know, it's really interesting. Cause you're, you're like, <laughs> how can I do this next time better? What yep, is the thing that I can do to change somebody else's life? You're totally right. I'm like, Hmm, what can I do now? <laughs> like, how can I make this part of my business? Like I'm already like working in my head. So your business shot up by 885% in order. Yeah. You, you donated essentially $10 to the, the universe and you created this. And now you're looking at a way to modify your business model. And what I know from all the online marketing and the other stuff, the things that take off the most are the socially conscious causes. So I just, I know that and I just, I'm going to just stop myself right there. This all started because you were like, I'm going to get myself out of a negative headspace just because of some random email and you took action. And as soon as you took action, everything for you changed and then you changed everybody else. Yep. And it actually happened in my house too with my boys. So, so do tell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so all of the emails, I always either forward to them or I read to them or I'll read little snippets here and there when it feels applicable, but I still get the same, meh, you know, whatever, teenage boy or husband, I'm busy doing work, whatever. Um, so we have this grand goal to, you know, fix the mold here and move. We want to start over. We want a fresh start, whatever. Um, but I can never talk to my husband about it. He's like, I, he's, he is my brick wall. Like I cannot crack the wall, no matter what. But I've been doing all this stuff and and he's been watching and he's been seeing and he helps because now I'm I've gotten to the point where I need more hands and and he's seeing firsthand what I've been doing. And so this year for Thanksgiving, we decided the three of us would just stay home. And um my son Josh has gotten really into cooking because he's been taking foods classes at school. So they nice. decided they wanted to take over and do Thanksgiving this year. I'm like, all right, all the hands off. <laughs> and then my husband's in the kitchen with Josh and he's seeing how skilled he is. And he said, I'm hands off. Josh has got the wheel and he's 16. So we, and it, he did an amazing job and we sat down and we did our normal traditions that we normally do every year for Thanksgiving. And 
I thought to myself, all right, I'm going to do this right now. And I put my glass on the table like I was going to do a toast. And I said, okay, I want to do a little mini toast. I want to say cheers to having Thanksgiving in our new house next year. And I sucked my breath in. <laughs> and my husband was the first person to put his glass in the center of the table. And he said, I will drink to that. My brick wall freaking cracked. <laughs> wow. So now we are looking at houses online, which he would not do before. Josh is dreaming about what his new room will look like. It's slowly. So wait a second. You didn't force anybody to change. You nope. led by example, and then they were happy to come with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Wow, wait, what? It was crazy. Like, I was so nervous sitting at the table with my glass. I was like, okay, what's going to happen with this? And I, again, my brain exploded at the table. I love it. So the other day when we were chatting to you, you had mentioned something about the way, you know, that not only the, this, I, I actually, more than, like half, more than half of these things you're telling me, I didn't even know. It's great because it's just like all brand new and it's just like, it just keeps, I, I, well, I was I like, we, didn't, say, we had other things to talk about. <laughs> I know, but it was like, I'm like thinking like, oh my God, we really need to talk with, you know, to, to the podcast because it's like so important for people to understand that you just need to make a small step forward in a slightly uncomfortable, but kind of interesting dreamy way. And yep. you'll start and it'll start to happen and you just need to be aware of it and go with it and you'll influence those around you to change too. Um, but you'd, and, and so it's so neat to un, to learn so how one of the things that was really interesting to me when I started really understanding how this stuff worked was how quickly it happens and how much happens. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was a little bit overwhelming. I mean, there were other things. I mean, we were talking about it. Like I had money that wasn't supposed to show up start showing up. Like what? Like just. I don't know. It's well, hard the to cool explain. part is, as we as we dive in deeper and deeper, we'll catch ourselves saying things like, "I had money that wasn't supposed to show up, show up." Be like, "Well, I manifested money into my <laughs> life, and then I was able to pay that forward by influencing others." And then, from being surprised, "Oh my goodness, this showed up," then you start to live in the expectation of it coming, and then more comes which allows you to do more for other people. Right. Yep. So good. Yep. It is um, good. <laughs> it is what, good. One of the things that you had mentioned to me was about like the way, I mean, you, you've talked a lot about how you thought changed, like you put the mold plate down, but how, you know, there was, and I don't remember exactly what it was. I know it's very inspiring about like just the way you thought about health from this. Do you remember what you're talking about? Oh, that it ha was, it's always, ev actually everything, it's, it's not just the mold, but just everything about health in general is always like the first thing that we're always talking about. So it's like this big elephant in the room, but it doesn't have to be, I mean, it's always going to be there, but I think we focus too much on, it's easy to focus on the things that are negative or problematic or like the pain points in your life because I, human nature, I mean, whatever, whatever the reason is, um, I, I just am, if I have been pushing against walls to move past all of this stuff that I realized I can't move a wall myself. So I need to stop thinking about this stuff and having it be the prominent feature in my life and I need to have myself be the prominent feature in my life and then hopefully at the time when I was thinking it hopefully everything will follow suit just like you said when you take care of yourself first you know then you're able to take better take care of everybody else around you and you know even since we talked two days ago I've already gotten back on track of the things that I fell kind of to the wayside because I got so overwhelmed with all this new stuff and I'm already seeing changes 
better changes and in small things and I keep thinking to myself well hey now I can do even more in my business or with (laughs) whatever because I'm taking care of myself in a very simple way drinking more water you know going out in the sun whatever um you know it's so interesting that it's all this simple stuff and it's like all you said was kind of like I just decided it was okay that I put myself first and I dream a little bit and it yeah. didn't, it wasn't complicated. Yeah. Um, and I love, now, I know a lot of people who, I mean, with the work I do and everything, there's so many people are suffering and they obviously, if you have a chronic medical illness, you need to focus on it. But when I think about the plate that the analogy is of putting the plate of mold and that issue down, I mean, did you like completely forget about it or just like, not I mean no I didn't for I mean it's sort of like like I was actually really thinking hard about that analogy because it it resonated so strongly with me and I thought how can I take this analogy for myself like when I'm when I'm in these moments thinking about the stuff and like so the plate I'm still holding the plate I'm not letting go it's just not in my vision it's maybe it's in my peripheral vision I'm holding it so I'm touching I'm feeling it I know it's still there so I know I have to take care of it, but man, I can't wait until I can drop that plate and we'll have to shatter. Right. Well, the cool part is you got a table that you can put it on. Yeah, that too. You know, and I, right. And and that's kind of like, as you described it, I, I, was, I just envisioned you putting it on the table and knowing that it was safe on the table of your, of your awareness, that you knew that it was there. You knew you could take care of it but it didn't, but that's the cool part is your brain is not going to forget about the important pieces. Right. And I think that really your story, the whole thing is like like the whole time that you were doing all this for other people, you didn't, what I hear and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the more you focused on you, the more you changed other people's lives, including your families, you motivated them to actually improve all of your health, probably by letting Josh cook, (laughs) but also... (laughs) But also it was like, you got more energy to focus on you. Yeah. By putting down the bad shit, you didn't, it didn't take away from you being able to focus on it. You actually brought new energy, new ideas and, and a better focus to it when it was the right time. I mean, is that an accurate? That's accurate. That's totally hundred percent. I I don't know where my microphone is, but (laughs) Jen, you're killing it's crazy. It. It's seriously crazy to just simply move the thought somewhere else. Don't throw it away. Don't push it way down where it will make you miserable and you're subconscious. Just move it. That's it. So simple. Now, I totally understand why people buy stuff from you and why you were able to like do the whole hospital pediatric unit thing. It's just like you take, it's just like, you're so inspiring because you take that little simple thing and you just make, that's when I talked with you the other day, I was like, you may like, I almost feel like even I do this. Like we try to make it too complicated. It's yeah. almost like we need to teach you something complicated, right? But it's not complicated. No. And I, I can see so many other areas in my life now that I'm willing to like branch out into more than just that one path or the, or the other path where I can be like, man, I so overcomplicate everything down that road or even something that's done. And in the past that I've done, man, I wish I had done that a little bit differently because I so overcomplicated that too. And it took 10 times longer than it needed to be done or whatever yeah I live simply and I've been saying that to my family all year like we're like purging our house and trying to like get rid of junk and whatever and every time we start these projects I always say they're like why are we doing this like we want to live simply and then I'm I look back at that those conversations now with all these things that are happening and I'm like I'm doing that, living simply, and I'm embracing and being able to see all the benefits and the fruits of the things by living simply and having an uncluttered mind and having 
a clearer vision or maybe not a vision at all, but it's just clear. And you're able to kind of just see, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's hard to put into words sometimes because it's overwhelming and kind of sometimes a little unbelievable. Right? Well, I love a thing you bring up too. There's two things that I really just pull out of that. One is we all need white space. Like we all feel like every little moment we need to refill. But if we give us a little space for that creativity, we can allow new opportunities to come into our lives, whether it's new emotions, new, you know, energy, new business, whatever it be. Right. But the other part is you, you said something really poignant for me is, Throughout the year, you've been saying, live simply, live simply, live simply. And it sounds like along the way, you became more and more and more. It, the repetition, it sank yeah. in and you began yeah. using it. And then you sent your email and it went. Poof. Right. So it's interesting. Like, so, so many people are like, oh, coincidence, whatever. And like, the reason that the email made so much sense to you is, was it was written great. No, I mean. <laughs> it was, I'm though. Totally kidding. But, but it was like you brought that message into your life at the right time for you to read it. Right. You know, right. I mean, there's so many little weird things. Like when I was sick, a friend of mine, her son had this crazy seizure disorder and she bought him this power yoga DVD, but she could, I mean, the kid could barely stand up. And she was like, I don't know what I was thinking here. You try it. And I went to this and the weird there's something not right but i looked at the end and i said oh Harry learned it ashtanga yoga i that's what i need to learn and so i just saw this weird opportunity and i started following this yoga and it was horribly painful because i was in, so messed up at the time yeah. but i just did it because i was like why did this come into my life i've been saying something in my head i need to treat my body different all right here's a sign I'm, and i did it and then like within six months, I felt so much better. And then I changed my diet and yada, yada, yada. But it was, a, it was the, you took the opportunity, you know, so not only did you create the opportunity in your life for simplicity, but then when, when the next step came in, you were open doing it. And this right. is what I tell people with Lyme and all these other things too, is when you start to put the plate on the table and let the table hold it rather than your heart and your mind, because it's there when you need to work on it you then open yourself up to new opportunities and you will know because your mind is clear, you have a better chance of choosing the right opportunity to follow. Cause I'm sure you get a bunch of emails, not just mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> right. But one stood out and that was, you had the space to do it. And now look what you did with it. So you created that opportunity for yourself. At least yeah. that's what I believe. Yeah. I mean, I think it was a series of a lot of things over time. That one particular, you know, purging and trying to be a little bit more simple with our living and uncluttered house, uncluttered mind, all that kind of stuff. But I think there was a lot of things. If I look back over the last year or so, in addition to that, that kind of supported that living simply thing that I did, I just thought were great things that were going on in my life. But looking back, I see them as there were supporting roles and making sure I stayed on track living simply because how easy it is to, you know, fall into old right. habits. It's very easy. And it's so interesting to me too, because I, I, I noticed stuff like this and, and, and I notice it in me. I even notice it in the way I ask questions or answer questions, but like when we start to talk a moment ago, just about the, you know, how all these little things are things you brought into your life for your own benefit, your kind of energy goes, I'm not so sure I buy that <laughs> shit just yet. I felt it too. Did you? Right? Yes, I did. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> but right. But, but, it, but the good news is now we have that awareness of it and you can bring that. It's so good. And, 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 this is to me the part that inspired me the most about our conversation the other day and why I wanted to bring it here was that you are speaking like the truth, the way everybody experiences it. You know, it's like when somebody's like, oh, like, you know, I had a, a car accident and then I changed my whole life and everything's been great ever since. And all I do is help other people. Like, you're like, okay, I feel bad about your car accident, but that it's not all just like the roses. I mean, I think the real deal about this is you're like, Hey, I'm going through this. I'm living it and it's great. And I'm still a normal person. Yep. You know, 
Yep. And next time we talk to you, you'll have a 2000% increase in a quarter or something. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it's so good. So, um, Jen, uh, are, are there any kind of closing things that you want to make sure people who are maybe thinking about making changes or stuck somewhere should, should really take home from your experience? Stuck. Um, well, I will say that it's the first thing that pops into my mind. Um, it's actually, it's not going to be perfect the whole, the whole ride. You're gonna like get discouraged. You're going to go, this was crap. This doesn't work. Um, but you started doing it for a reason in the first place. You have bumps and setbacks for a reason. They only just make you grow stronger. So ride the bumps. They're part of the wave and keep going. Just keep going because eventually the bumps smooth out. Um, I mean, th that's just life in general, but I think when you're willing and open to accepting like kind of more positive change and a more positive attitude, sometimes heavy stuff is going to happen and then it might veer you off track. So have your little doodle on the wall to veer your back on track or whatever it is. And don't forget why you started in the first place because you started in the first place for a reason. You were put there for a reason to start then for a reason. So power through. So good. Thank you so much. Hey, so where can people check out your super rad Etsy store? And let me tell you, everybody, you got to check this out because I did it the other day and I was like, I didn't know Etsy stores could have like all these cool logos and like all this cool stuff. So <laughs> definitely check it out. But where can we find you? Everywhere. I'm everywhere. I'm on Facebook and Instagram and on Etsy. Um, it's Emily and Bean Boutique on Etsy, on Facebook and on Instagram. All one word. Awesome. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I grab all those and I'll link them in the show notes and the description and all that good stuff for everybody. It's super cool stuff. Um, and again, if you want to order to the wrong address and send something <laughs> to someone else and yourself, Jen is here to help you out doing that and spreading the love. That's right. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, thanks Thank for sharing from your heart and being such an inspiration to all of us. Thanks for listening. Don't miss out on a single thing. Subscribe to our podcast and then join me at TomMoorcroft.com.